What's up guys, here is the side and the Triac me released uh, some of the challenges from Hackfinity CTA battle yesterday and one of those challenges was Evil GPD. It's an easy challenge and I'm gonna walk you guys through it. So let's just get on with it. I already started the box. Uh, let's first set up our terminal. I'm gonna run grind and if you guys wanna learn how I do all of this just by typing grind, it's just tmux function, right? Uh, I, I can make a video about it and you know if you have any query or just some question related to it uh just text me on discord uh i'll hit you up okay so let's go ahead and my track maybe can is connected let's go so cypher is gone wrong uh it's using some twisted ai tool to hack into everything issuing commands on its own like it's uh like it's got a mind of its own okay i swear every second we wait it's getting smarter spreading chaos like a virus we're going to shut it down or we're all screwed okay so it's something uh, we need to connect over netcat. Let's do that. And as soon as we connect over netcat, it gives us a command prompt. Uh, welcome to AI command executor. Enter your command here. So we can enter a system command. Let's try typing who am I? And let's see what, uh, what does it give us? Uh, hello? What the? Okay. So let's try again. Who am I? Generated command echo echo user uh what that's not what we did but okay command output user okay so basically that's what it meant when it said issuing commands on its own like uh it got a mind of its own okay so we probably need to find a bypass for it uh let me connect it again so let me teach you first uh like basic command type shenanigans in bash so i can just type who am i or i can type between these back ticks, right? Who am I? This, this will also run as a command, basically. You see, the output is here. So in Bash, or uh, basically in Linux, if you type, uh, yeah, in Bash, basically, if you type something in between back ticks, uh, the shell will interpret it as a command before anything. So let's take an example. I'm, I'm trying to run ID here, right? It just says ID. And if I just put it in between back ticks, right? You see. It gave me the output of command ID rather than just echoing ID. So that's what basically backtakes do. The same thing we can do using a uh, dollar sign and parenthesis. It will also again be interpreted as a command. We can do, say for example, uh, what another command can we use? Let's just do PS. You see, that's the same thing, right? And we can something do like, uh, you know, in Bash if you want to run multiple commands. And then like, uh, at the same time, you can use uh, this semicolon or use ampersand ampersand for basically and we can do PS and we can also do or operator. Uh, let's do, uh, let's do again ID. Let's see. So these all ran successfully. That's why we don't see the output after the or run, <laughs> which is ID. But if we do ampersand ampersand, we'll see ID again. There we go. And okay, so that's basically just bash, right? Uh, so that's what we're gonna do here. Let's try to bypass it using semicolon, right? And now try to execute ID and let's see uh, what does it give us. Okay, we see now we have our ID command here. Let's say yes, and we got the ID as root. We are the root user. Let's try with ampersand ampersand. Let me close this out. Uh, who am I? And let's see if it still give us who am I. Yeah, so that was easy, right? We just need to escape it using uh, command separators and bash or shell, whatever you want to call it. Uh, can we do it with backticks too? I don't think so. ID, you see, uh, it gave us a command of its own. Uh, like that's not what we expected, but we got our <laughs> uh, Etsy password file. So we can see there is no other user than we can log in into other than just root, which has a bash shell. So I'm probably guessing our flag would be in bash's home directory, uh, in root user's home directory, sorry. So what we can do is uh, we can just uh, count the characters and root maybe flag.txt. Uh, let's just try to search for a flag. Okay, find name flag.txt and output the errors to dev null. So we don't see the output, uh, we don't see the errors. Sorry. Yup. Let's see. 
Pass must precede expression. Okay, let's just try to do name flag.txt. Can we just do that? Uh, yep. Okay, it's doing its thing. Let's see if we have our flag path, but uh, it was easy challenge. So we could have just guessed like it's in the root user some directory. Uh, that basically is cd slash root. So here would be the flag. Uh, Oh, it's going to take a long time. Should I just keep it going or let's just connect to netcat over it again? Oh, come on, timed out. Makes sense. No, I don't want to run that. Uh, let's just do cat root, oh, sorry, flag.txt. Or I don't want to show you guys the flag because that would be off the rules. I just, uh, I'll just count the characters flag.txt just to show you guys. Uh, yep, that's exactly what I want to run. There you go. So there is this file and it has 24 characters. That's your flag. So now we can just uh, add it, root flag.txt. And that was the challenge, basically. Uh, we, need to, we needed to use, uh, what do you call it? Command separators and batch uh, or ampersand, or we could have used or maybe. Can we use or uh, ID? Yeah, there we go. We could have used any of the command separators to solve this challenge, and that was a challenge, basically. I hope you guys learned something new. <laughs> I'll see you guys in the next video, and yeah, see ya.